It is all very well knowing how to set up a static CP in theory and how to do it in a non-tactical position. There will come a time during your period as detachment commander when you will have to command a detachment through the task of an erecting a command post area and indeed sighting a combat team headquarters within a tactical position. To be able to do this quickly and efficiently, you will have to practice until you have it working as an SOP. Corporal Smith was given the task of setting up a new CP position by his combat team commander. Since then, he has done his recce, issued orders to his detachment, and they are now moving into the area. As yet, no other members of the headquarters have joined them. Before attempting to set up your area, you must decide what equipment you will require. And it is suggested that every CP vehicle carries a loading list and plan to ensure that nothing is ever forgotten and can be found easily in the dark. Remember also that you must set up your CP area in a logical sequence. There are two separate parts to that area, the operational and the administrative. When moving into a position, the primary task is to provide communications for your commander. So the operational area must be set up first. Remember while setting up to maintain communications and you will see the driver remaining on the set using vehicle antennas to communicate. In this film, you will be shown the setup of a combat team command post in a tactical position. We will not be dealing with an APC command post, as the same principles apply, but it is easier and quicker to set up. We will start by looking at the operational area, as it is the most important. This can be split into three parts. The CP, the antenna area, and the battery charging area. Broadly speaking, they should be set up in that order, although concurrent activity may be possible. You will notice that the CP is based on a three-quarter ton Land Rover with a 9x9 shelter on the back. Both have been camouflaged properly so as to break up the shape and to speed this process, the detachment commander carries cam poles on the vehicle. The Land Rover has been backed into the wood so it can be driven out quickly in an emergency such as an attack on the headquarters. You must, of course, also have a quick method of raising the cam net to allow this to be done. Remember that although you may have a vehicle, you should always use a generator for charging batteries because it is quieter. It is less harmful to the vehicle and provides less of an infrared image. Try to think of the vehicle as nothing more than a means of transport and a mobile communications platform. Normally, radios should be remoted to the CP, but if the vehicle is required for other purposes, all radio equipment may have to be removed and transferred to the CP. This is a dismounted CP, which is the most difficult to set up. You will immediately notice that the CP is uncluttered and tidy, an easy place to command from. There are two tables, one for the operators and one for the commander although operators must be able to work from the Land Rover if required. Above each desk should be a DFC Rants board, providing quick access to signals information. Some units may prefer to use Nirex files, containing this information instead. The commander must also have a map available to him, so he can follow the operation situation. Don't forget that your Duty roster should also be in view. The radios must be accessible and here we see them on top of the table. Their position is unimportant provided they do not clutter up the working area and it is easy for the signaller to change the frequency. The commander must also be able to speak on all nets so he must be provided with remote handsets, remote control unit or set combining box. This should be clearly labelled and hung up out of the way. 
Every good detachment should carry spare equipment with them. And here you see it's stored away so it is accessible but does not interfere with the running of the CP. Down there also is the stationary box and only the basic requirement for one logbook per net, message pad and Slidex wallet should be on the operator's table. Don't forget paper for your commander and an ample supply of writing implements. If your CP is to operate in the hours of darkness, you will need to set up lighting system, but remember, you must have a proper blackout screen. If you are operating in winter, you may also require a heater, but this should not interfere with the running of the CP. Remember, the CP is an operational area, not an admin one. It should not be used as a store for weapons and webbing, and it is most definitely not the place where operators come to eat their meals. And finally, remember a good CP is a tidy one, so don't forget the rubbish bag. To obtain communications, we must get our masts and antennas erected as quickly as possible. Therefore, when you move into location, put one man onto erecting the antennas, and then he can be assisted when the CP is up. You should aim to use the simplest antennas possible. Let's have a look at the antennas my detachment have put up and let us see if they have applied the four most important points which are. First, keep antennas clear of overhead cover but concealed and screened. Second, Keep them away from paths and tracks. Third, roping the area off as a precaution against nighttime intruders. And fourth, minimum radiation. The first antenna we will look at is the eight meter mast. As we see here, the mast has been positioned not very far from the CP and the white band is clear of any overhead branches. The area it has been sighted on has no traffic going through it, people or vehicles. One point I want to bring out at this stage is, although the antennas are sighted away from main activity spots, you must still try and hook any coaxes over the branches of trees and keep them as high as possible. It not only prevents accidents, but it stops you losing communications. The remainder of the antennas in this position are sighted in much the same way. The 5.4 meter mast and the ground spike antenna can be sighted on the ground or up a tree depending on where you can achieve comms. Once you have erected your antennas and started to communicate, you can now start thinking about the final area on the signal operational side. The battery charging area must also be sighted close to the CP, as this is your only means of powering your sets once your vehicle has left you, but not so close that it provides a distraction. So this area must be set up in such a way that it is easy to operate and maintain. Let's have a closer look at this one here. And I want you to take note of the height of the overhead cover. The reason it must be that low is to keep the area as dry and tidy as possible. Note how neat and tidy the area is and that there is a first aid kit, fire extinguisher, and the area is wired off. Don't forget to dig in your generator and jerry can and bury the exhaust. Remember also that the area must be camouflaged. Those are the signal operational parts of the CP area. Let me now show you the CP area as a whole and I will summarize on the points brought out so far. Remember, 
the vehicle must be driven in so it has an easy exit. The vehicle as well as the CP must be camouflaged. Remember that the CP is a working office and that it must be neat and tidy all the time with no rations or rubbish hanging about. Remember too, keep your antennas well screened and clear of overhead cover. The coaxes must be well clear of the ground and remember that your battery charging area is your only means of power to your sets. Therefore, it must be kept clean and tidy and it must be well sheltered. The next part of the headquarters we will deal with is the admin area. Because the detachment commander has achieved his objective in providing communications for his commander, it does not mean to say that he can relax. There are a num another four areas to be set up before any of the detachment can start to ease up. These might be set up by other members of combat team headquarters, but it is a possible task of the detachment, and so we will show you how it should be done. The areas are the sleeping area, cooking area, POL area, and of course the latrines. There is no priority for setting up these areas, but they must be erected as quickly as possible. In this sleeping area, the tents have been set up in line. This is for easy access, especially at night. They must be well camouflaged and kept away from any noise. I suggest you put a line from the CP to the sleeping areas, and this will enable you to find the area easily at night. The next area we're going to look at is the cooking area. The first thing we must do when selecting an area for this is to try and pick somewhere with no leaves or rubbish on the ground. If there is no such area, then you must clear all the rubbish away. As you can see, this position has also been provided with overhead cover. The final point I want to bring up is it must be sighted away from any POL. On the subject of POL, let's have a look at the POL point, which has been erected in this location. Again, this area must be well clear of leaves and rubbish. It must have a fire extinguisher, and the cans must be dug in. Finally, remember to rope the area off. To complete our tour of the headquarters, we come to the latrines. When sighting this area, you must remember to position it downwind and to put up some sort of screen. Always remember to keep a shovel handy. The last thing you help to sight are the fire trenches, but this will normally be done by the company sergeant major as part of the overall defence plan. Those then are the admin areas in the headquarters. Remember to have easy access to your sleeping area and keep it away from noise. Your cooking area must be cleared of rubbish, provided with overhead cover and kept away from POL. When sighting the POL area, dig the cans in and keep the area clear. Keep a fire extinguisher on hand. Finally, remember to sight the latrines downwind. You have now seen the complete CP area and how much is involved in setting it up. Remember your priorities, which must always be to provide communications before anything else. Keep your CP clean and tidy and maintain it as an efficient working area. Finally, remember that everything must be efficiently concealed and camouflaged.